Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is Steve Drafter, and it's time for our review of the second quarter here in 2020 of World of Warships. I did one of these a little later in April uh, to look at first quarter than I probably would have otherwise preferred. Um, and so I made a point about, about a week ago to start gathering my thoughts, gathering data together to get ready to basically make this video as soon as we rolled over and the second quarter ended. And here we are, it's the 1st of July, I'm sitting down to make this video, and uh, so there's no delay, right? We're getting right into it. So for those of you that haven't seen me do one of these before, and if you're interested, you can go watch the one I did for first quarter. I'll, 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 I'll throw a link up here, or a card or something, so you can find that video. Um, basically what I do is I, I take a quick review of the, the patches and some of the major things that have happened over the game in the last in the last few months, because it's very common that, that you know, once you, once you get... So let's say two months after a patch, you don't really remember what's in it, right? If I were to ask you what, what came to the game in, the, in the, the patch in April, most of us probably wouldn't remember. So what I do is I do a quick refresher. Like, guys, this is what actually happened this quarter. And then we go in and we, and we do a, deep, a little bit of a deep dive into the population, uh, the pop current kind of average daily numbers of each server, and look at that historically. And I'll talk a little bit this time because I've, I've added some numbers to my internal tables uh, talking about year-over-year -year population changes. Um, percentage increases and percentage decreases and stuff, and we can have a talk about that and what those trend lines might mean. But for starters, let's just have a look at the quarter we just finished. In this case, second quarter 2020. Now, update 9.3 came out in April, of course, with the full release of the European Destroyer line. I really enjoy these ships. I really enjoy these ships. Like every other line in the game, there's a couple of, eh, this is not my favorite ship. But on the whole, I feel like this line is really, really solid. The, the solid AA, the heal, uh, the lack of smoke is something that you have to play around. It is It does make them, um, I'd say, a higher skill floor than a lot of other destroyer lines because you don't have that get-out-of-jail-free card of, oh, I, you know, I push my smoke, or as, as Lord Zass says, I make inky, right, and I run away. Um, but what these ships are designed to do, they do really well. They have pretty good, pretty good little guns. They, they, they can knife fight with other destroyers effectively, especially when they come in with a health advantage. They have really solid AA, especially at the high end of the line. And as we've seen in some of the submarine battle testing, and I'll get to that in a minute, they're excellent anti-submarine warfare platforms, which is something that I had speculated on but wasn't really sure until we started seeing the, 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 the numbers in the little submarine training room. And it was like, yeah, these ships are going to be really good at ASW. So yeah, the, the, those ships are all, of course, in the game. They came with a new campaign, the Strong-Willed Campaign, that awards the, uh, the, the, the fancy-named Polish-European uh, unique captain at the end of the campaign. I'm not going to attempt to pronounce his name. I will butcher it, so I'll just save everybody the hassle of having to yell at me for butchering it. Um, but yeah, it's, anytime they add a new permanent campaign to the game is a good thing. More content is always good. Of course, this patch also came with uh, a, clan a new clan battle season, Tier 10, 7v7. And of course, as we talked about the last time, carriers for the first time. Now, this caused a lot of uh, a lot of knock-on issues, a lot of irritation, a lot of wailing and gnashing of teeth amongst the player base, and I think it's justified. Um, I like like so many. I don't feel like carriers are are ready for smaller formats like this. Um, Wargaming recently came out with their analysis of this clan battle season. Um, and basically, they said in the, the, the lower leagues, they were very happy with the variety and the fact that you could take a carrier or a battleship um, and make it, you know, and your team could be competitive. You didn't have to have one or the other. But essentially, they acknowledged that at the higher tiers, without an aircraft carrier, you were basically not going to advance, not able to stay in those leagues. Um, and that really kind of underscores the power level difference that the carrier brings with all of the spotting that it provides in, the, in that, that pinpoint damage on demand on a specific target, um, and so on and so forth. So they're, they're trying some things as we go into a new clan battle season. For starters, they're dumping it back to Tier 6, which already tells me they're basically acknowledging the problems that exist with, with carriers in this format, because at Tier 6, you're going to have, uh, I won't say you're going to have fewer of them, you're going to have, they should not be as pronounced. Um, at least I'd like to think that. Um, we'll see. It might be it might be just as big a train wreck. I don't think anybody really knows right now, but we'll see. But anyway, we had a quick of course that 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 came in 9.3, ran five or six weeks. Um, this was a big one, and I was so glad to see this. The entire signals interface and camouflage interface in the port UI was redone. You can now mount and demount a flag with a single click. No more of this click six times to mount a flag. And then of course, the other nice thing that went along with that, they removed the eight signal limit. 
used to be for the first, you know, what, four and a half, five years of the game, you could only ever put eight signals max, period, end of discussion, on your ship. Now, you can only put eight combat signals, but you can put unlimited economic signals on your ship. And that has been amazing. Because now you can stack a camo with just every single bloody economic flag you can think of, and it makes grinding or regrinding ship lines just so much faster. You can rack up a ton of XP in a hurry, and it is really it is this has been a great quality of life change. There were some more matchmaking improvements. They started changing the number of uh, bottom tier ships that would be allowed in games, in in the sense of uh, the example they used in the patch notes was if you no longer would you be the only tier eight ship in a tier ten game. If you were going to be a bottom tier ship, you would you would be at, there would be at least I think it was at least two or three other ships in there. I think it's three is the minimum total. So if you were the bottom tier ship, you'd have at least two other ships on your team, and then of course mirrored matchmaking on the other team of the same type of the same tier. So no longer would you be the lone poor H, poor tier eight schlob in a tier ten battle, and that's been nice. Um, this this change also altered and kind of reduced the number of double carrier games. I have seen a handful. I will admit that I've been in a, I've been the carrier in a couple, but they're they're much rarer than they used to be, at least on NA. Now, obviously, I can't speak to any other server. I suspect on Asia that might still not be the case because Asia has seems to have a higher carrier population than the other servers. But on NA, I've noticed that there seems to be a note a note notable drop in the number of double carrier games that I've been seeing. Because this was also the patch, they, they officially moved the unique upgrades into the research bureau for research points. So if you hadn't been able to unlock the missions you needed to earn them previously, now you're forced into the research point system to earn them. Um, more changes with this, of course, and we'll talk about that in the next patch. Marceau came to the game for Cole in this patch. Um, not my favorite ship, but uh, okay, you know, for Cole, whatever, she's all right. Um, and then, of course, uh, the typical round of balance tweaks. We had small nerfs. By the way, you're going to see some repeat offenders on this list, so just stay frosty, okay? Valkyrie, Jutland, and Daring, okay? Um, Jut this, is, this is actually, this is already, I think, Jutland and Daring's second time on the naughty list. Uh, this is a Kuryu's uh, third time on the naughty list, I think. This was the second time they nerfed her rockets, if memory serves. And then, of course, this is one of the ways times they went in and they, they yanked, you know, 20 more AA DPS away from Kremlin, as if that was going to, to magically uh, magically make that ship somehow less awesome uh, okay i haven't quite figured that out yet but there you go and then of course they've started going the other direction with some things okay atlanta and flint got some buffs to their rate of fire uh colbert got some survivability buffs which is interesting given that i believe it is still the uh the least survivable tier 10 cruiser if memory serves uh really nice quality of life buffs to pensacola new orleans and york they all got their bow armor buffed which makes them a little more resilient to i believe 14 inch battleship shells which is really nice because they see quite a few of those in the in the matchmaking they get. And then Hawkins, tier five British cruiser Hawkins, uh, got some buffs to her, you know, quality of life stuff, reload, and I think uh, consumables or AA or something. Anyway, Hawkins needed a little bit of love. I know at one point they buffed some of her turret angles, which she also desperately needed. So that was nice to see. As we moved on into May, oh, and then of course Narai, Narai came back. I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we moved on into May, we went into update 9.4, which was the pre-release of the big Soviet cruiser split. So now you could start earning early access to, to Lynn, Riga. Um, you had the chance to uh, purchase, or uh, I think it was purchase, Ochakov and uh, Pyotr Bagration. And then, of course, they took Kirov out of the line and Moskva out of the line and moved them over to, I think, premium ships. And then they added um, Kotovsky in Kirov's place. Um, and then... Actually, no, the Moscow split didn't happen until 9.5. That's right, we'll get that. So at this point, we're not there yet. And then 9.4 brought with it the submarine testing. Now, this was a really interesting... For starters, I have to give them a ton of, a ton of credit. This is what they should have been doing with carriers, right? They should have done this with carriers. The carrier changes that were implemented should never have just been dumped on the live server without at least two or three rounds of this kind of of testing to balance the AA, the, the AA numbers, the damage numbers, all this. We it would have saved us, look at all the months of pain we went through at the beginning of last year as basically the carrier rework was live tested. We were guinea pigs, right? We all lived through it. This time with submarines, they're taking a completely different tack. They're doing it in its own mode with some kind of some fun rewards off to the side. They're keeping it its own little own little thing. Now this was this was both good and bad. It's good because by doing it on on the live server, you get more people interested, you get more games with humans in it. The bad news is is that everybody wants to drive a submarine. And so after about the first week of the the battles being 
accessible when you tr if you tried to zone into a submarine battle um in a submarine there were 400 people in the queue and you would eventually get a game and everybody else in the game was a bot so it was like a bunch of human driven subs and a bunch of bots and it was not effective um there were a couple games that i tried i tried i went back in as a destroyer like to try and test some anti asw capabilities on some some of the tier six destroyers and the trouble was then again i'm, I'm human human submarine captains on the other team but then, like, the cruisers were bots and the, the battleships were bots, and it was just, it wasn't realistic, right? They were, they were, they're bots, so they play suicidally. They don't have any regard for their own safety or survivability. They don't play like humans. But I'm glad to see them taking this tack with it. And, I'm, of course, they haven't told us that this, this just ended about a week or ten two days ago, two weeks ago, something like this. And we haven't seen them post about, you know, what the data says and what the next step is. But I'm encouraged by the fact that, you know, it's obvious that the desire is there to iterate this sufficiently until they get where they want to be. There's obviously a lot of things wrong with the iteration that we just went through. Um, I'm, I'm confident they heard that from, uh, I, I know for a fact they heard it from a lot of CCs. I'm confident they heard it from a lot of players. But there were a lot of mechanically, like, mechanically, the, the thing worked, right? Like, submarines work. You could, you could go up and down, you could dive, you could fire torpedoes. The little sonar ping thing was functional. We can argue the... Um, uh, if that's why we want it to work or not, but it was it worked for what it was. So technologically, the the foundation is there for them to start now iterating the mechanics to find a, a happy place where that's going to work. So I'm I'm encouraged to see that they're going to keep this uh, out of the way until they're ready for it. This was a huge one in 9.4. Premium consumables gone. Everybody now gets essentially the the premium consumables that the rest of us have been paying for forever. Everybody now gets that for free essentially. And man, this was a long time coming. This was something they, they initially spoiled to us. They, they mentioned last year it was coming as a part of the NTC changes. And I don't know if you guys have noticed, you've been paying attention, but you know they announced the NTC last year after we'd all been in St. Petersburg and there was this big uproar and then they, they yanked the whole thing in and they reworked it into the research bureau. But if you really pay attention, pretty much everything they wanted to accomplish and achieve out of the NTC, they've done in some other way. It just hasn't been called that. Um, this is one of them. Um, you know, uh, moving the unique upgrades around and, and, and that sort of thing. There's a, there's a lot of things that they were trying to accomplish with the NTC that they they basically found another way to get to. And everybody's just kind of shrugged and, and gone on with life. I could, write, I could do a whole video on that. Let's just leave it at that. But the bottom line is premium consumables going away is a good thing. Because now you no longer have to worry about Let's be honest, you don't have to worry about your derpy teammates. Hey, did this guy take premium better heals or not? You don't have to worry about it. Everybody's got them now. The port UI improvements continued in this patch, um, which was awesome. I think, was this the one? I forget, was this one or the next one where they revamped? It was the next one. They redid the, 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 UI, the, uh, the armory and the, um, the um, mission interface. But just they're continuing to each, each patch. And I think there's a new one even coming in the next patch where they're going to redo the upgrade screen, which I can't wait for. So yes, this has been nice. They're finally putting some love into the UI. German aircraft carriers came to the server for, for super testing. Um, you can call it good. You can call it bad. They're coming either way. So at least they're taking a couple of patches to put them through their paces. And of course, we have another round of Balgrids tweaks. Hey, look, our buddies Valkyrie, Jutland, and Daring are all on the naughty list again. Um, I don't know what it is about Valkyrie. This is like the fourth consecutive patch that they've nerfed Valkyrie. And it's, a, it's, it's tier three, fellas. Like, are we really that concerned? <laughs> But apparently we are, so because they keep slapping her. And then we had some buffs to Weymouth Hawkins, T22, and Ernst Gate. The T22 buff, giving her Hydro, has been really nice, having reground that line. Ernst Gate now gets Hydro with her stock hull. So that this that little change here prompted me to, re, to, to, to do my research be a reset and regrind the German destroyer line. And so far, it's better than I remember. And then, of course, as we head into June, we got update 9.5 with the new version of the dockyard. Now, this... It's been radically changed, of course, since the Puerto Rico train wreck from, from Christmas time. And the entire event, I don't know about you guys, I think the entire event just feels much better. It's much more achievable. They tell you up front, hey, if you want the carrot at the very end of the stick, which is Odin, you will have to spend some doubloons. I think it was 3,000 doubloons or something like this. But you can earn you can earn your way up to where all you have to do is spend those 3,000 doubloons. And then the directives themselves are really not that onerous. Like I have been I have been knocking these out without even making any attempt to do so by just playing the game the way I regularly play, I've been knocking them out. So, I feel like they've hit a sweet spot with the dockyard. I I'm encouraged by this and I'm really hopeful that they'll continue to use this feature 
for other ships and other releases down the road. Ah, here it was. Ah, I misspelled Armory. But yeah, this is the complete overhaul uh, of the UI for Armory and missions. This has been lovely. The, the mission UI got a complete relake, and that is so much easier to navigate now. It was very different, so it took me a little bit to wrap my brain around it, but once I know where to look and how to click and how to navigate it, it's super easy. The Armory, the armory na um, overhaul for the UI there has been also really nice. It's much easier to find things now. Uh, more changes to unique upgrades. So in 9.4, they kind of reintroduced all the unique upgrades that were basically just being left alone. And then 9.5, they started reintroducing some of the unique upgrades that needed changes or tweaks. And then I believe, they haven't announced it yet, but I think, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming over the next few months, we'll start to see them add in unique upgrades for Tier 10 ships that have never had them before. So I'm curious to see what those announcements come uh, look like when they come out. I don't believe they've said anything about what those are going to look like yet. If they have, I've missed it. So, but we, I mean, you have to assume they're coming. And I'm just, I'm just cautiously optimistic that they'll, that they'll be good when they come out. Of course, this was also the full release of the Soviet cruiser split. This for the first time, this is the patch now. I was wrong earlier. This is where they yanked Moskva out. Nevsky took its place. Um, you still, I say full release. I'm actually, it's actually not quite right. You still can't get the tier 10 ship, which is Petropavlovsk. Um, I don't believe she's going to come out until 9.6, but you can play Riga and start earning XP to unlock your Petropavlovsk now, if you want to be working in that direction. Uh, there have been a couple of clan brawls in this patch. Of course, we had one a couple of weeks ago, and there's one this coming Saturday on the 4th of July. Um, I have never played a clan brawl, but I intend to play the one on this weekend, and the, the folks in my clan that have that have done it have said it is just a blast. They it's 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 low stress, tons of fun. You get in with some buddies, you derp around, you blow up boats. You can stack some camos and some flags and make a bunch of free XP or whatever. Anyway, it sounds like a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to trying it out. Um, 9.5 brought us the big, uh, the nice buff to the German, the entire German destroyer line. This is another reason I'm regrinding the line to see kind of, yeah, you know, does it help? Does, this, does the line feel better? How do these shells perform now? Um, but this is a good quality of life thing uh, that I think, that I think interestingly came out of one of the Discord Q&As they did. Um, so I'm, I, I, was, I thought it was interesting to see. Of course, the Warhammer 40k collaboration. Uh, coming, uh, coming as it did. Uh, this is it's, uh, the last two weeks, I think. But you know, some fancy camos and some fun commanders and some over, uh, some uh, uh, voiceovers. And then, of course, hey, look, it's our old buddy Valkyrie still on the naughty list. I think this is now like the fifth patch in a row. Valkyrie is on the naughty list. What I need to go play this ship. Apparently, it's the best tier three destroyer in the game. Um, Weymouth getting a small nerf bat. This was a, another nerf here. You see, Hakur use AP bombs, as I recall. And of course, they, they, hey, look, guys, they nerf Kremlin, they nerf Kremlin's AA again. Right. Okay, moving on. Uh, buffs. Again, Hawkins getting some buffs. New York got her reload buffed. And then Ognavoy and Udaloy kind of got, like, rejiggered. They reoriented. They realigned, I think is the word I want to use. They realigned how the AA, uh, the defensive fire consumable, lined up on those ships. So that basically it got its own slot. So you no longer had to choose. And, and those two ships that lead up to Grozovoy now actually uh, very closely mirror Grozovoy in their consumable choices. Which I think is a really nice change to kind of standardize how that, that section of the, the Russian destroyer line plays. So let's go have a look at populations. So I'll say what I say, uh, said last time, okay? For starters, we're going to do this quarter, uh, server by server. What you're seeing here is the average daily population of each of these given servers for the entire quarter. There's a website. I'll link it down below. You can go pull this data yourself. This is not some big super secret thing. I just go in and I aggregate this data. I drag a little bar over until I've got an entire quarter highlighted, and it shows me what the average daily login number for that quarter is. And you can see here on NA, one, just like the quarter before, we've recently had our best quarter ever. Nearly 10,000 uh, average daily, uh, daily logins here on NA, which is, which is pretty stunning. Um, we've never had that big of an, uh, of a, of an average population. Um, I believe our total server peak, like the, the high point, the high watermark for concurrent users is still um, back in, uh, I think, first quarter 2018, they ran some kind of thing. We had almost 20,000 people logged in a couple of times in this February. But um, for a, an average, this is, this is really nice. And of course, nice steady trend line. Excuse me. You know, you see here, we're just going in, going in the right direction. So population-wise, NA, very healthy. Game seems to be growing, growing nicely. Now... And I'm going to say this on every one of these slides, so I'll just go ahead and get out of the way. Ordinarily, you see second quarter as a drop-off, okay? You look here. Second quarter 19, we go from here to here. Second quarter 18, we go from here to here. 17, here to here, right? It's, it's just normal that you've got this drop-off in the second quarter. This is the first time in NA server history on the second quarter that you, the server has grown this quarter. 
And now I think it's pretty safe to say that we can we can attribute a lot of this to, to, to quarantine, right? The, the NA guys, the EU guys in particular, have basically spent the entire second quarter under some kind of quarantine or, or house arrest or lockdown or whatever, whatever bloody word you want to throw at it. And so I think you're seeing, you're going to see these population numbers. You're, they're a bit of anomaly, right? But it still points, the trend line is still going in the right direction. Oop, wrong direction. So again here, looking at EU, the, the EU server continuing to have a really solid quarter here, nearly 16,000 average on a daily basis. And again, that's just like on NA, that is their best second quarter ever. You see a typical second quarter here, about 11 and a half, about 11 and a half, about 11 and a half, a little low back in 2016. And then bam, here we are, 16,000 players a day. So yeah, like it's, I, it's, there's, to me, there's almost no question that this is, this is, this is not pandemic related, right? Like this, ordinarily these graphs all take a nosedive in second quarter because the weather turns and people are going on vacation and it's getting warmer and getting out of the house and people are traveling. And, you know, we don't, we don't have that right now because we're all locked indoors essentially and nobody's flying or traveling anywhere really. So, so yeah, but it does mean that with two or three quarters of steady growth here, the, the EU trend line, which as recently as um, fourth quarter of last year, when I first started pulling these numbers, it had a nice gentle downslope to it over the life of the server. Now you can see it has a nice gentle upslope to it. So it'll be curious to see if, if as things start to shape, to shape up, if this, if this number holds in third quarter, because we're still dealing, still, still dealing with world pandemic, or if as travel returns and lockdowns end, if we're able to come back in and maybe this number kind of rebalances and kind of goes down again. We'll just have to see. I don't know. But yeah, you, you looks pretty good. Um, Russia, we talked extensively last time about the reasoning why this line probably is where it is. I won't belabor the point again. If you want to hear that discussion, go check out the first quarter video. But you can see what, what, what's impressive to me is that first quarter to second quarter, Russia has held pretty steady. And again, just like on NA and EU, that's almost unprecedented. You see here, here's first quarter, 19, second quarter, 19. First quarter, 18, second quarter. First quarter, second quarter. So ordinarily, there's a steep drop in Russia, right? As we go from first quarter to second quarter. But this time, kind of held our own in terms of server population. So I feel like, again, this is probably a little bit of pandemic related. I think some of the Russian lockdowns started a little later than they did uh, some of the Western countries. But, uh, you know, for the moment, Seems okay. Now, the overall trend on Russia is, of course, going the wrong direction. I don't, I don't think that's going to change. I think, I think the Russia high water mark is always going to be back here in the early life of the game. Um, but, I mean, for the moment, things are holding steady. So, okay. Seems like they're doing okay over there. And Asia. Now, last time we talked about the ridiculous spike that Asia had seen. Just And interestingly enough, they've managed to maintain almost exactly the same level of average daily logins as they had in first quarter. Um, you, we, we talked last time about that this giant jump might have been pandemic related. This this also, this, this steady hold might be pandemic related. It probably, some of it probably is. I think some of it might also just be that, you know, and we talked about this a second ago, folks just aren't traveling, right? There's just not a lot of travel. Um, so yeah, but I mean, again, a positive trend line, things looking healthy, seems good, right? Like overall, Asia is going in the right direction. And that's something that, again, as, at the, as late as, you know, the back end of last year, this trend line was going the wrong direction. So these last two or three quarters have been really, really, really good for the health of the game. I'm not going to show you the percentages because it's not formatted for it, but I'll tell you this. Ordinarily, and I've got the little, the little table, little graph. I've added some table uh, uh, columns to the, the, the chart that I have. Um, ordinarily, the game, the, the, the concurrent server, the daily average login between first quarter and second quarter on a global level drops about 15%. That's, no, that's a normal, a normal year. Okay, well, from the first quarter to the second quarter, the average population of the ser of you know daily logins drops off about fifteen percent ish, depending on where you are in the world. Okay, this year globally, it's held steady. It's actually up just a smidge over normal, about four percent. But that's a staggering rebound from usually you're down fifteen percent, now you're up four percent year over year. The second quarter population of the game is massively up, well over a third, 35% better than this time last year. And I, again, you're, you're seeing two things at play there, in my opinion. One of them is the, the pandemic, and the other one is the fact that last year in second quarter, we were in the middle of all the, the, the giant mess of carriers changing, and you just never knew what was going to change, and did it work, and A, it was a failure, and da, 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 and hmm. I think a lot of people just stayed away while all that went on, and then as things settled out the back end of last year, you saw some folks coming back. 
And as things have continued into this year, some of those folks have clearly stayed. So again, now you're just seeing this graph is just everybody on the same page. So you can kind of see the trend lines as they all overlap. EU remains the, the most popular server. But if you look, you know, Russia, NA, and uh, RU, nice, this nice kind of steady little clump here, around 10, 12,000 apiece in terms of daily, uh, daily average population. That's really nice. That's really nice. One of the things that people asked for the last time I did this was, what are the, show us everything on one side. Slide, show us the global average. So here it is. Here you go. This is literally just, if I took all of these numbers from this slide by quarter and added them up, this is what it looks like, okay? Now, as you would expect, like the overall population number is going, the trend line is negative, right? Because if you look at this graph, almost everywhere but Russia, you have these nice, gentle, easy uplines. And then the Russia one is like, bam, going the wrong way, right? So these little small upward slopes are not going to counteract this downward slope, right? It's just not going to happen. I will point out, though, while we're here, if you look, the global average daily login population here, almost 50,000, right? That is the best quarter since launch. Look at this. Third quarter, 2015. Way back here, 52 and change. Here we are, second quarter, 20. Best quarter since launch. And again, you're probably seeing some pandemic related. Ordinarily, I would expect this number to be probably down, uh, probably down around 40 or so, right? If that's a 35 seems to be normal for second quarter. But, but when you look at the population gains you're getting in Asia and everywhere, I would expect this number to be higher than traditional for second quarter. But it would still be, this line would still normally probably drop. But this year, it didn't. Global, global politics matters. But what happens if you take Russia out of this? Like, we know Russia is kind of dragging this down in terms of the trend line. Let's take them out. So now if we take, if we take Russia out of the equation, we put them in, we pull them out. This is, this is EU, NA, and Asia all added together. We've just left Russia out. And now you see those servers did just have their best quarter ever. Even better than launch in terms of population. Uh, daily average logins in terms of, you know, people, people at average population at a given snapshot of the mode of the day. And that nice positive trend line, of course, carries over as you would expect. So much like we looked at in first quarter, overall, right, population of the game is very healthy. Every server has plenty of people to blow up, plenty of, pe plenty of people to shoot at. Um, trend lines, and if you play anywhere but RU, trend lines are all going in the right direction. As I've said repeatedly, I think a lot of that has to do with uh, the world situation. On a normal second quarter, we wouldn't see that, but here we are. Um, be curious to see if we hold some of these numbers or if things continue to tick up uh, as we get deeper in the year. I don't know. We'll find out. I'll see you guys again with one of these in the, at the end of, let's see, it would be the end of one, two, three, the end of probably we'd be looking at early October, wouldn't we? Yeah. So guys, until then, be safe, wash your hands, and I'll catch you next time.